Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us again this morning. Uh, I'm sure God is going to bless us today uh, on this uh, Palm Sunday. Um, what, imagine one week uh, to Easter. Um, so my prayer is that God will speak to you today uh, through this message. Uh, just want to let you know about an online meeting we're having this Friday, our Good Friday service at 12 o'clock uh, on Facebook Live and YouTube. Uh, we're just going to be celebrating um, just the, the power of the cross. Uh, we're going to be having some communion together. Uh, so I would encourage you just to have some bread, uh, have some Ribena there, just in preparation as we just have communion together um, as we celebrate Good Friday. I want to just share for a few minutes, um, just before I get into my main message, um, just about prayer. Uh, there's been a, a, a couple of verses on my heart this week um, from Philippians chapter 4, verses 67, that says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything you can understand. His peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Um, and today, if you are feeling anxious, if you are feeling fearful, then let these words uh, just sink into your heart and into your mind. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he's done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything that you can understand. His peace will guard your heart and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. And so I want to encourage you in prayer. There'll be those people listening who pray, they pray each day. And I want to just encourage you to keep pressing in in prayer. Keep praying for our nation. Keep praying for our, our, our health workers at NHS. Keep praying for those on the, the front lines serving uh, the public um, and helping uh, them. Uh, there'll, be, there'll be those of us listening, those people listening, uh, and maybe you've not prayed in a while. Then I want to encourage you to get back into prayer. Um, why don't you make a start today? Um, just come before God for a few minutes uh, and just just speak to him. Just let him know what's on your heart today. Tell him what you're anxious about. Tell him what you're fearful about. Tell him your, your circumstances. He knows it, but he wants you to speak to him uh, about it. Uh, and there may be people who have never prayed. Um, you've thought about it. You know people who do pray. Um, and I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you. Um, why don't you try prayer? Try prayer for a week. Try it for a month um, and just a few minutes uh, each day uh, and just come before God. Um, you know, you may be saying, well, I don't know how to pray. Then speaking to God uh, is just like speaking to your close friend, just telling him what's on your heart, which is on your mind. Um, and so I want to encourage you to, to try prayer uh, in these times during the coronavirus, in the times when you're spending time in your house. Prayer is a catalyst for bringing change to our lives, uh, to our city and to our nation. <clears throat> and so please keep praying. Uh, I want to speak th this morning uh, about believing, uh, about just what are we believing? Um, the story that I am going to be uh, using this morning is from John chapter 11, uh, a story about Lazarus, Lazarus being raised from the dead. Uh, I'm sure it's a story that is familiar to all of us, uh, certainly to many of us. Um, the, the main emphasis uh, the main thrust of this chapter uh, is believing, uh, believing in God, trusting in God in all circumstances. Uh, and that is the message that Jesus wants to get to his hearers. He, he, that's the message 
that he wants to get to those that are facing uh, these difficult circumstances. Do you know, if we are going to turn our lives around uh, and be free from anxiety, free from fear, uh, free from just allowing the circumstances of our life to dictate our emotions, to make us fearful, then and I really believe that we have to learn uh, and discover that we can trust in God, that he cares for us, that he loves us. Um, and so in John chapter 11, uh, verses 1 to 44, uh, I'm not going to read all uh, the chapter, um, just pick um, parts of it. Uh, and just share some lessons that we can learn uh, from this story. Um, but, you know, after this message, why don't you just pick up your Bible uh, and just read the whole chapter uh, and just let God speak uh, to, to your life. Uh, John chapter 11, uh, verses 1 to 3 um, says, A man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters Mary and Martha. This is the Mary who poured uh, expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was sick, so the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is sick. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death, no it happened for the glory of God, so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. Do you know Lazarus, a close friend of Jesus, um, the, the brother of Martha and Mary, and um, all of whom Jesus loved. Um, Martha and Mary send a message to Jesus saying that Lazarus is sick. In fact, he is very sick. Um, and Jesus um, stays where he is two more days. <clears throat> I'm sure we would have expected Jesus, uh, because he loved Lazarus, would have left and stopped what he was doing uh, and rushed straight to uh, Lazarus. Do you know, even uh, I remember the story of the centurion who came to Jesus and asked for the healing of his servant. Uh, and Jesus, as he said he would go, uh, the centurion just says, just say the word, Jesus, and my servant will be healed. Do you know, Jesus could have spoken the words of healing to Lazarus, and Lazarus would have been healed. <clears throat> but Jesus had, he had an agenda. He had a message that he wanted to get across uh, to those that were in this situation. Uh, he was wanting to strengthen the faith in the people. He was wanting to build trust and belief in him through this situation. And he wanted this situation to glorify God and to bring glory to his name. You know, this was an opportunity for God to be glorified. <clears throat> uh, and you know, in these times of the coronavirus, uh, I really believe that this is a time when God will be glorified um, as he moves across this land in people's lives. Um, as we serve in our communities, as we share our faiths, uh, I believe that God will be glorified through this. All things work together for good to those that love God. And so let's see this as an opportunity. The first lesson that we can learn uh, from these few verses is that in difficult times, you can trust Jesus. Um, all of these are based on the fact that Jesus loves Mary and Martha, loves Lazarus. And I want to say, God loves you too. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus, to die on a cross for you. <clears throat> and so this is all enveloped in the love of God. So in difficult times, you can trust in God. Even in times of anxiousness, in times when we're afraid, we can trust in God. Believe it. Uh, I think it's all to do with perspective. 
how we see our situations, how we see our circumstances. Do you know, we can see them uh, as an obstacle blocking us, or we can see them as an opportunity to build faith and trust in God. Jesus wants us to get to that place where we will trust and believe in him. Uh, All through this story, uh, you will see verses uh, in verse 15. Now you will really believe. Verse 26, do you believe this, Martha? Verse 40, you will see God's glory if you believe. And in verse 42, so that they will believe that you sent me. Jesus hears word that Lazarus is sick. And so what does Jesus do? Uh, Well, he stays two more days. Um, He delayed going uh, and stays where he is for two more days. Someone that Jesus loved was seriously sick and yet Jesus stayed two more days. Do you know, Jesus knew things that other people didn't. Jesus had a different plan. Uh, This was a situation that he was going to use to bring glory to God. Uh, The the second lesson I want to to share with you us today is that we can trust in God's timing. You know, Jesus knew what he was doing and God knows what he is doing. You know, and his timing is not our timing. He works on a different time scale from us. Do you know, like children who want things now, uh, they, they want that biscuit now. They want that playtime now. Uh, and, you know, sometimes like children, we can be like that in our attitude, that we want our blessing now. We want our miracle now. We want our answer to prayer now. Um, and, you know, Jesus was two miles away. Uh, Bethany was two miles from Jerusalem uh, and Jesus could have been there um, easily. Um, but, you know, he stayed where he was two more days. He was on his father's schedule. Uh, and I want to say, even when things don't make sense, you can trust in God's timing. You can trust in God's timing. Jesus had a plan to solve the problem. Uh, he had a plan and a purpose that was beyond what his disciples uh, were even contemplating. Uh, Jesus decides there uh, in verses verses 7, uh, it says, Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. But the disciples objected. Rabbi, they said, only a few days ago, the people in Judea were trying to stone you. Are you going there again? Jesus replied, there are 12 hours of day daylight every day. During the day, people can walk safely. They can see because they have the light of this world. But at night there is danger of stumbling because there is no light. Then he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I will go to wake him up. Joe, in this delay and in this time when Jesus decides that he will go back uh, to Judea, Uh, The disciples got alarmed. Um, Only a few days ago, the people in Judea were trying to stone Jesus. Uh, Jesus knew that this return uh, to Judea, that the healing of Lazarus uh, would precipitate his arrest and his death. But he also knew that he was on his father's schedule and nothing could harm him until the appointed time. Uh, And Jesus uh, is letting his disciples know that Lazarus is dead. Uh, And Jesus says that he is glad uh, he wasn't there, for now they will really believe. Do you know, a a third lesson that we can learn uh, from these verses, uh, Jesus was going back uh, to a place of danger, uh, He was going back to a place that threatened security, as it were. Uh, And you know, what we face in our life, 
what we face, uh, even in this coronavirus time, uh, will bring just a challenge to our sense of security. Our security is being threatened. But I want to say, believe and trust in God. Believe and trust in God. Believe and trust in God. Jesus arrives in Bethany and Lazarus has been dead four days. And Martha runs to Jesus and says, Jesus, if you had been here, Lazarus would not have died. And Jesus says, your brother will live again. And Martha, uh, believing that there is going to be an end time, says at the last days, everyone will rise, as Jesus says to Martha. But I want to say that eternal life, life was standing before Martha. Jesus declares, uh, again, one of the I am's, from the Gospel of John, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? Maybe Martha uh, and Mary felt disappointment that Jesus never came quicker. Uh, maybe Martha and Mary felt disappointed that Jesus maybe had let um, Lazarus die uh, but this disappointment uh, was going to be turned into an appointment this was an appointment for the bringer of life eternal life standing before them to bring life to Lazarus and you know the, the stacks the odds were stacked against Jesus four days Lazarus was in the tomb um, and as Jesus tells him to roll the stone away uh, Martha uh, says, but Jesus, that the body stinks. He has been de de decomposing uh, for four days. But Jesus, he says, didn't I tell you you would see God's glory if you believe? There's that word again, believe. Believe. I love this verse. Uh, and Jesus says, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out. And his hands and feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in a headcloth. And Jesus told them, unwrap him, let him go. Do you know, a, a lesson that we can learn just in this is that we can trust God's purposes for our lives, even in our disappointment. Uh, God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Uh, God has a plan and a purpose for everyone listening to this message. Uh, and we can have faith and trust in God's purposes uh, and see him release uh, God's power in our life and through our life as we trust in him. Do you know, in closing, uh, I want to say, believer, uh, if you believe in Jesus, uh, you're a follower of Jesus, then I want to encourage you, I want to declare to you today to shake off uh, the grave clothes of doubt, of unbelief, of fear, anxiety and trust God. Uh, you have been called out of darkness into his light. Uh, you were dead uh, and now you are alive. But sadly, uh, there is many Christians uh, who are walking about alive uh, but still carrying the grave clothes uh, that just bind them up. Uh, and I want to encourage you to shake them off. Uh, your hands and your feet are no longer bound, and so walk in the freedom that Jesus has won for you. Uh, for those people listening, uh, and you don't have a relationship with God, uh, maybe you have just, again, come across this message, you're listening to it, I want to say today there is hope for you. Uh, you might, as I said, not have a relationship with God. Uh, the Bible uh, describes your life, your spiritual life as being dead. Uh, but I want to say today uh, that life can be yours. Uh, you don't have to stay dead. Uh, Jesus, uh, the resurrection and the life is calling your name today. As he called Lazarus, um, come out then I really believe that Jesus is calling you into life in all its fullness. 
and that you can know this life today. It's for freedom that Christ has set you free. Uh, and so if you are in that place, uh, I want to just encourage you to just to, to pray to God uh, and just say this short prayer. Uh, will you pray this with me? Jesus, I admit today that I need you. I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me. Come into my life and make me alive. Make me a new person in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, and if you have prayed that, uh, again, I want to encourage you to share with someone. Uh, why don't you email us at dundee.elam at gmail.com uh, and let us know that, that that is a decision that you have made to give Jesus your life uh, and we will send some material to you. Uh, I hope and pray uh, that this message has blessed you today and that you, some of these lessons that you can apply uh, to your life. But the one thing that, that we can take away today is that as we trust in Jesus, as we believe in him, he will be with us. He loves us. He cares for us. Uh, and he has a plan and a purpose for our lives. Uh, just want to say, stay safe, but let's stay in faith. Uh, and let's be a blessing to others. And uh, all that leaves me to say is, uh, you are blessed to be a blessing. See you next week.